America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. The entire world wants. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And humanity saw that the sky was not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Are you in need of a tech service company that's going to deliver the best solutions for your business? The Natronica is your solutions headquarters. Here we specialize in your individual needs to make sure your business shines. For more information, please call 301-417-0070 or visit us at our website at atronica.net. Atronica, where we deliver for you. Hey, everybody, it's John DuParent from Project Forgive. How are you doing? You are in the right place for the highest level of conversation to feed your soul. American Meditating with Sister Jenna. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Vin Verga, author of The Soul of All Living Creatures, and I listen to America Meditating Radio. Sister Jenna and the American Meditating Radio Show are the key to peace, truth, beauty, and all that is good in the world, which is why I am a confirmed listener. This is Valerie Alexander, author of Happiness as a Second Language. Thank you. 
Mm, hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and we're broadcasting from the Meditation Museum. Hope you enjoyed that. To be lifted by Lucinda Drayton on her Bliss CD, and also trust that you had a wonderful celebration of Martin Luther King this week, and that you're really coming to appreciate the courage that certain souls like ourselves and individuals like King and Gandhi and so many others who just step up when things are not always in your favor. Today we're going to have a wonderful conversation with Kristen Meekoff who's going to tell us how she stepped up and got her life together regardless of the, let's just say, the cards not going in her favor. Before I get Kristen on the air, I'd like us to go into a little meditation and take our awareness into off the grid and inside of the heart. Breathe in deeply, my friends. Take it easy. In this meditation, I invite you to become aware of the two types of consciousness that reside within the soul. Let us choose the consciousness of light over the darkness of past stories, the history that gets into our way. Let us now remember our connection to the Supreme Energy, the Supreme Soul, the Being of Light. For far too long, we have allowed the external forces to dictate our inner force. And at this time, I choose to get off the grid and step inside the heart to be myself. I choose to no longer be under the influence of what the world tells me, what my parents have told me, my spouse, friends, or anyone who has been a negative influence in my life. In this meditation, I stand strong in the original, eternal, imperishable worth of the soul. I, the being of light, the soul of power, I step into the heart And I become a being of love, a being of light and goodness. Welcome back. That was Off the Grid, Into the Heart by yours truly, Sister Jenna. And if you haven't gotten the copy, you are missing it. This is it. This is the way to go where you can actually be full on in life, but still be able to have an inner reflection and an inner sense of yourself. And now, my friends, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our wonderful, beautiful, and powerful Sister Gita as she brings up something from her resources of great content to our show. Sister Gita, what do you have for us today? Good day to you all. I think of you as beautiful souls. Sister Jenna introduced Martin Luther King, and I am remembering a very powerful soul who is more known in from India side, and today is his memorial as well, Prajapita Brahma. So we celebrated our 9,000 centers in the world, celebrated and honored the goodness that he did, putting women in front and giving up his business and opening this grand university. A pocketbook full of wisdom. There is no need to prove the truth. If you try to prove the truth, you only reveal your own stubbornness. Truth will always reveal itself at the right moment and the right place. You need be concerned only with staying true to your own self. This is a word of wisdom. Have a great day. Om Shanti. Beautiful as usual, Sister Gita. Thank you so much. 
The America Meditating Radio is really, really honored to welcome our next speaker. Kristen A. Mikov graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts from Kalamazoo College with a major in psychology. Now, Kristen completed the Clinical Master in Social Work program at the University of Michigan and is a licensed social worker. But in 2007, when Kristen Mikov was 33, her husband, a teacher and a veteran of four years, was diagnosed with an advanced adrenal cancer, and approximately eight weeks later, he left the body. Ms. Mikov was born in South Korea and was left on the street. She was found by a passerby, and four months later, she was adopted by new parents. And about two weeks shy of her fifth birthday, her father, James Van de Vos, passed away too. See, he was battling cancer, and her mother remarried a few years later, and Kristen was adopted again for her second time. You see, she's been through a lot, but she continues to rise up. Today, we're very privileged to welcome the wonderful Kristen. Hi. Thank you so very much. This is a huge honor. I've been thinking about this for a long time as soon as I got the invitation, and I'm very, very grateful. Well, you are such an inspiration, Kristen. I mean, my mother herself was orphaned at five years old, and when you hear her stories, it kind of, I get how that's quite an interesting space to be in, but at least she had five years with her mother, and for you it was different. And yet, okay, life goes on, and we are all facing challenges in our life, but what I would love for you to share, what gives Kristen her strength to keep moving forward? I believe deep down within each of us and also within myself, I feel a a strength of unbounded gratitude and positivity that has allowed me, even when it's been very, very difficult, to continue to go forward. And for myself, you know, I found a purpose that was just as intense and involving as the wounds that I have suffered. And most recently, it was in writing this book uh, for widows from all different ages. And I put their stories together in the hopes that they too would find some healing and be able to identify with another widow in the book. As Antonia was telling me, our producer, about the over 100 individuals that you actually interviewed, and one of the things that have come out again and again was just a sense of physical illness that would come upon some of these individuals because of the emotional pain that they tend to go through with that loss. Is that true? Yes. I mean, there is something called broken heart syndrome that physically happens to the body when it's under extreme stress, such as the loss of an individual near and dear to someone. And then some of the other widows in the book didn't have something quite as extreme, but they did have bouts with the flu, for example, or they had to see their doctor and were placed on antibiotics. Some were placed in the hospital having severe panic attacks, uh, thinking that they were having a heart attack. So it is when a loss occurs, and this could be from a divorce or it could be a death, the body does react to that particular stress, and it's different for each individual. Yeah, I'm sure it does, because we are all interpreting our role in life and our relationships to ourselves and within our own being in a different way. Meditation, what role has meditation played in your life, Kristen, where it has become a very important inclusion in your life? About two and a half years ago, actually, I was literally walking through my living room and I heard Deepak Chopra's voice on the television and he was on some repeat episode of Oprah, ironically enough. And I had not heard Deepak speak before. I'm probably the only person on the planet that hadn't hadn't at that point read any of his books and materials. And I listened to what he said. He said, even if you've never meditated before, one can begin with this simple OM, O-M. And I thought... Well, that's interesting. And he went on to explain that anybody can do this and you can begin at any time in your life. It doesn't necessarily have to be after something, a sudden loss. And so I began to do that the very next morning. I felt, you know, I have nothing to lose. And it has grounded me in a way that is very difficult to articulate, but it has brought this unbounded, I would say, gratitude and new light into everything that I'm doing. And the doors literally and figuratively began to open. And interestingly enough, through a confluence of some small events, I actually was in Deepak's office in New York City about, I would say, Well, I began in the summer and in January, two years ago is when I met him in his office, and it led to the development of a friendship, and he actually, I'm 
very honored to say, did the cover blurb for my book. So meditation is something that I do every day and um, sometimes twice a day. And it really has helped evolve and shape everything that I do. That is so beautiful. I love Deepak. He's a wonderful heart. Congratulations, then, on the release of your new book, The Widow's Guide to Healing. Could you give our listeners a sneak preview about the book and tell us a little bit of the things that we could find in it? Sure. As you mentioned earlier, the impetus for the book is unfortunately my own loss. And I read everything that I could for the first you know, three, three, three and a half years about grief and loss. And I couldn't find a book that had included the narratives of other widows. And I believe very strongly in the power of the narrative and that a story can really impact and influence and shape somebody's journey. And I wanted to be able to reach as many widows as I could, so I did it very old school way and literally called people and put it out there that I wanted to listen to their stories. And that's what the book is, widows from all different educational, economic, religious backgrounds, and it's blended together with some practical advice that I think can perhaps be of service to someone who has lost their partner or spouse. So not for me to be Angel's advocate and take you back into your past. However, as you look at yourself today, Kristen, how much have you changed and what would you say is so much stronger in you today as a soul? Things have changed dramatically. It changed the first time that I can consciously remember it changing was in 1979, uh, February 10th, when I was at my father's funeral. Um, That's the first time that I remember that's the first funeral I ever attended. And it's the first time I was ever introduced to even the concept of heaven. And it was a place, a very mysterious place. You know, I couldn't see it as a child, and I and I had absolutely no glimpse into even that concept before. And that really did change my relationship with the way that I saw the world. And then again, you know, in 2007, when my late husband got sick, that also changed things. But most recently, I think that changed when I met uh, Sagaru, and uh, I was introduced to him at um, my friend's home in New York, and it was a private dinner, and he sensed, you know, that I was still holding on to a piece of grief. And he asked me, he said, when did your husband die? And I said, in 2007. And I said to him, do you have any advice for me? And he said, if he had died, say, this year, and you were coming to me, I would provide you with some very sweet things to say. But I'm going to be very honest with you since it's no longer 2007, and you're not going to like what I have to say. And I looked at him and I said, it's okay. I want to know what you see in me or what you're sensing and what you feel compelled to share. And he said, "Did and he asked me this question. He said, did your marriage, was it good? Was it healthy? Was it joyful? And I said, yes, it was. And, I mean, I was choking back tears because I could feel that his presence is so strong. And he said, then your life needs to reflect that now. It needs to reflect that part of your marriage. And I can't exactly articulate how this happened, but I was able to let go of that last piece of sorrow that I had been, you know, kind of gripping onto. That's fantastic. It's tricky, you know, to let go of an event in the past that, shifted us so much and especially when we walk with the awareness or the attitude that it's supposed to last much longer than it actually did. Leave me with one or two of the most strengthening things that emerges when we overcome the loss of someone as close to us as a husband or a wife, a spouse. I think that what I personally grew into was finding a new purpose and a new meaning that was as intense and as involving as the wound that, you know, that I had suffered. And so that new purpose, for me, it was researching and writing, is able to sit alongside what was once the grief. And being able to find that purpose is difficult for individuals. I hear all the time people are asking, how are they able to find something new and meaningful when they have lost something that was so near and dear to them. And it begins with, I think, being able to feel comfortable with emptiness. And that's a very, very daunting and scary thing because when you touch the emptiness, and that can be done through meditation. Some people do it through contemplative prayer, others through yoga. Some people, you know, get involved in some very deep therapeutic counseling. But when you're able to really center yourself and connect with the emptiness. It brings you to a different level and you're not as apt to fill the void with unhealthy mechanisms. 
that we so often want to do when we feel anxious or a tinge of angst. It's very easy to fill a schedule, to eat unhealthy food, to engage in not so you know, healthy conversations. So that's really what I've learned to do is connect with that emptiness. That's very deep and that's very powerful because, yes, I think a lot of us struggle with the feeling of being empty, sort of just what I would call maybe just being, just being. Yes. We've spoken about the broken heart syndrome and you've even mentioned that some people can even go as far over the edge as feeling like they're going to die after a broken heart But you met with that Sadhguru, and you mentioned about how much he helped you to let go of the past. Could you give us one thing that he told you that helped you to move beyond the past? I think it was, and his presence, I don't, have you had the opportunity to meet him? It's astonishing, and it's beautiful, and it's very much filled with light. So it was his presence combined with the word, I want your life to reflect the joy of your marriage. When he talked to me about that and the happiness of it, I actually had to think, was my life reflecting that? And he said, I don't think it is, you know, and he was very honest with me. And that, the way he said it in such a genuine and authentic and wise manner did help me let go of that last bit of sorrow that I had been clenching. Beautiful. I love the part about the presence because, yes, it's our presence that definitely makes an impact more so. Well, Kristen, I want to thank you for your genuineness and your ease and your gradual and consistent growing into the greater part of you. And before I let you go, is there anything that you'd like our listeners to know that you're working on and a website that you could leave us with? And leave me with one quote that you feel would really take us to another dimension of consciousness. To answer the question, the, or the first part, my website is my name. It's K R I S T I N Mikoff M E E K H O F dot com. And I think that the quote that I really look at, interestingly enough, but I don't necessarily think we think about, it, is by Frederick Beekner, and it says, "There has never been another day just like today." And there will never be another just like it again. And when you think about that, I really believe that you're able to become more present and understand what this day has for each of us. And the hope that even though the pain of loss is so overwhelming, that it is not always this intense. And that's why I really like to share with those who have experienced grief or are currently experiencing grief that the hope is very strong and connecting through meditation does bring about peace. Mm, that's gorgeous. Leave us with a website. Oh, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-M-E-E-K-H-O-F dot com. Kristen Meekoff, you are a delight, a jewel, thank you. an angel, and a beautiful spirit. And we thank you for your contribution to humanity and to the show today. Thank you very much. Mm, take good care of yourself. Much love. Mm-hmm, same here. So you heard it directly from Kristen. We are evolving, and we are going to perhaps bump into someone that's going to just shift our thinking and make us find the courage to let go and certain certain things, too, that we might have to go through if we have to endure loss. And I'm not speaking this, like, easily. There's no doubt losing someone that you were expecting to spend many decades with by the loss of death, or as she was mentioning, maybe even by a broken heart, definitely shifts the energy karmically in ways that you and I will never be able to decode intellectually or with the ego. But we can definitely say something hurt and it doesn't feel good. And so this is where no matter what we go through, whether it hurts or whether it feels like joy and whatever, it's still in our hands to do the best that we can with what we've got. So please get a copy of Kristen's book, A Widow's Guide to Healing, Gentle Support and Advice for the First Five Years of Living Without Her Husband. Thank you for joining us on the America Meditating Radio Show. I hope that this touched your heart as it did mine. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. We are here to love each other the same. And if you're planning to change the world, why don't you start with changing yourself? This is Namu. Take care, everyone.